Time for public comments. Please uh, monitor your comments for five minutes, please. Good evening, Mark Ostercamp, Raleigh, and Representative Barnjo. I'm going to read a letter and we'll send you a send around as a copy. Um, as a package requesting the completion of new water cards from the Imperial Irrigation District have recently been received and reviewed by landowners and tenants, it has become apparent to the Imperial County Farm Bureau Board of Directors that there remains a level of confusion and concern with our members. As you know, the Imperial County Farm Bureau members represent a majority of the landowners and tenants which you are requesting the completion of water, new water cards from. At the monthly Imperial County Farm Bureau Board of Directors meeting on Monday, yesterday, the board passed a motion to recommend to its membership not to sign new water cards at this time as presented by the IID. It was agreed that signing this document presents the potential of inherent water rights being jeopardized. Therefore, the Imperial County Farm Bureau Board of Directors respectfully request the IID delay the February 28th implementation of the new water card program until such time as rules and regulation can be developed in a consistent and understandable format to water users and landowners. In addition, we request that two IID board members be available to meet with the Imperial County Farm Bureau Executive Committee as soon as possible to answer our questions and hopefully develop an agreeable solution to the concerns at hand. Thank you in advance for your consideration and we respectfully request an immediate response to our request. Um, gentlemen, I see Mike's not here, unfortunately, but I, we are reluctant to do this, but we feel like we have no, we have no other option. We have uh, gotten a little bit of legal advice, and the, um, that the main point we'd like to state is the Farm Bureau doesn't want to be seen as obstructionists. We'd like to see, be seen as always trying to move forward with all of your programs. However, when we are required to sign a document that very clearly states on the opening page that, and I'll read it for you if I can find it, this is an important legal document complete with care. Um, we're required to put down our own estimate of our acres, which leaves it wide open to uh, who knows what you could put in. Now granted, it's got the map in there and it states that you're supposed to use the map, etc. But as far as, as anybody will well know, um, people can make mistakes, etc. And I, um, we find that very offensive that you didn't manage to put down what you consider the acreage to be. That's a problem. And then also, as you have stated, and we think for very good reasons, that your rules and regulations are a living document, um, and yet you're asking us to sign an important legal document 
that accepts us, that we that states that we accept all of your rules and regulations. Uh, we find that to be very hard to do. That on one side of the contract, um, we are the signers, and yet the only people that can change the rules and regulations are the IID. Um, where do we go from here? As we stated in the letter, we would like to get uh, an extension on the time period. We feel that February 28th is not enough time. And we'd like to sit down with a couple of your directors. We'll let you choose who those will be. And we'd like to sit down and discuss this um, because obviously our concerns have not been getting through with staff to the uh, to your staff to uh, have a, a uh, an allocation method that is acceptable to us. We, uh, we apologize for that, but we, we don't apologize for that. We, we are sorry that we have to take this step, but we have to do it. And uh, anything that you can do to help us, we'll be right there to, to help you as soon as we can. Uh, if you'd like to ask me some, any questions, feel free. I have a question. On your, this letter here is different, somewhat different from your press release that you gave out to KXL Radio and the Ivy Press today, I believe. Okay, and uh, it, it, it's not, it's not, it's different, it's maybe different in some details, but not in... That's kind of on the same line, but I know <coughs> in the press release, you kind of talk about it here, you say that the Pearl County Farm Bureau Board is seeking a new approach using a water card that is more consistent with existing water card requirements. Can you elaborate on that? Um... The more consistent with existing water card requirement. I guess what we're concerned about is that the uh, under as you as you step into this new era where you're controlling the water, you're 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 stepping away from being a distribution service, which is which is what, as far as we know, the state water code allows you to be, and. Um, you are the only district that we know of whereby the district itself is going to be controlling by virtue of somebody turning the water back into you and you selling, or I should say, selling the water back to you and you selling the water from you to an individual. That's a departure from uh, all other irrigation districts. In all, in all other irrigation districts where there is a, an allocation, the distribution is done um, privately. And I'm not suggesting that that's uh, what, the, uh, what we have to do. I don't know. But I do know that, that we're, uh, we're departing from the original tenets of the IID because you become owners of water and are sellers of water, as far as we can tell. The, uh, and by us signing a document, I, I think, John, that our main concern is that we see a permanence in this that it should not be called for at this time. You yourself have stated many times, and rightly so, that we need to go through this for a year and see how things go. And we will be making adjustments all the way through. I don't know, maybe at the end of the process you may decide that a, that a uh, free market system is the best. You know, I actually just have been discussing this with other water districts, and they, and I tell them, what do you think would happen if there was a 50,000 acre foot shortage in a 2.8 million acre foot normal allotment? What would that do? I don't know anything about water markets. Is that good? Would that drive the market up to, to skyrocket? And they say, oh, I sure don't see how, but maybe it would in some strange case, but it would only happen one time in one year, and then from then on people would, be, would make adjustments for that. But um, the, uh, but, and I understand what you're trying to do to, in a, in a sense, it's almost beneficial to a farmer like myself, who is a forage farmer, that, and a lot of it, that um, uh, I, I'm going to be using more than 5.25, and I'm going to have to be buying water from the district. I know that. But, frankly, I'm not really that concerned about it, because I really feel that if anybody made the mistake of holding water all the way to the end, that they're going to be begging me to take it or something. But, I mean, obviously it would be from, uh, they'd be selling it back to you or hoping that somebody takes it. But 